Sometimes you gobble the goo, and sometimes the goo gobble you. <laughs> and, and what's today? Oh, we're getting, <laughs> we are getting gooled by the gaba today. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the Buildwood Vlog. We're in Butte, Montana, flown to Bozeman last night from Los Angeles. And today we're with Montana Resources at the beautiful Butte Copper Mine. As the name suggests, this is a copper mine. The main products are copper and molly, molybdenum. Uh, copper is doing great right now. So this is an operation that's wide open. It's been here for a very long time. This is a historic mining town. Butte is littered with old mining operations. You'll see it all through the town, but this is, this is the big primary, primary operation they have going on here. Uh, right behind me, there's a Bucyrus 495 shovel. They have another 495 down in the hole. So we'll go see this shovel, that shovel, and then there's a 994 loader that we're gonna go see as well. If we get lucky, we'll be able to go into the processing facility to see how does it actually become copper that's in your home. So we'll hopefully get into a little bit of that, maybe see the shop, and it should be a really great day. So I'm super excited to be out here. I've driven by this mine a bunch of times. If you've ever driven through Butte, it's impossible to miss. The town is right there, and then there's this massive mine right next door, so it should be a good time. This is their main, one of their main production rope shovels. They have three rope shovels. They're all Bucyrus 495s. I believe the bucket's about a 40 cubic yard bucket and they're loading Cat 793s that are about a 300 ton truck. I'm maybe a little bit over, maybe 310, 320, somewhere in there. Quick correction on the truck size. Truck sizes are 230 tons for the 293Cs and 240 tons for the 293F model. Not even close to 300 as I previously said. Up here, this brown material is waste. So they've been working on opening up this new part of the mine for a while now and they're just about to ore. So this next lift right below us, they cut in about 40 foot lifts. This next cut, they'll likely be getting into ore grade material that they can haul to the plant. But all of this is being loaded into trucks and hauled off to the waste pile because there's no usable copper or anything in there. But you have to remove the overburden, the waste, to get down to that copper ore. They're just about there. So that is another 240 tons of waste Headed to the waste pile. You can see the Bucyrus shovel, it's set up to load on both sides. So as it's loading this truck on this side of the shovel, another truck can be backing up on the other side of the shovel. So in theory, the shovel doesn't ever have to stop. If the shovel's stopping, you're moving less material, you're ultimately making less money.
All right, we're down here at the bottom of the beautiful Butte Copper Mine. We have the Cat 7495 shovel right behind me, loading another 793. So this morning we were way up at the top where they're expanding the pit. Right now we're actually in the pit. And from where I'm standing, they still have about another 500 feet of depth to go. There's another 30 plus years of mine life on this mine. And just about everything we're standing on right now is the ore. It's a low grade copper ore. So you need a lot of ore to create the copper you're after, but depending on copper prices and especially where copper prices are right now, this is all still very profitable material to be mining. So everything that's getting thrown into these trucks right now with that shovel is going up to the crusher and is gonna be going through the plant. All of this gray material is that good, nice ore uh, that'll eventually turn into copper that keeps your lights on every day. So the, the cat shovel is quite unique because this is actually the very first cat shovel I've seen operating. I've seen one other one at Tanaha, but it was just sitting there as a lawn ornament. This, I guess, was the first one delivered after Caterpillar bought Bucyrus. All it really is is a Bucyrus 495 shovel and Cat put the seven in front of it and put Cat on the side of it and painted it yellow. Although they painted this one white and blue to match the other ones. Let's talk about blasting for a second. We're not gonna see a blast today, unfortunately, they're not shooting, but you can't mine without blasting. We are in the earth right now, and the earth is made up of very hard rock. See, that, that shovel can't necessarily dig. That's a rope shovel, it's not a hydraulic shovel. It doesn't have a lot of power. It can't just go into a rock and dig the rock. So what you need to do, you need to blast it. So they have their production drill. You can see the, the mast up there. They'll have the production drill. They'll drill out a pattern. And the goal of the blasting, like we've talked about, is to get that perfect fragmentation. Fragmentation is really, really important when it comes to mining because not only does it help the shovel dig, you want that shovel to go through the material real nice and easy. You want it to fill the truck in a, in a very nice manner. So the better the fragmentation, the better the truck fills, the better the fill factor. And then the less work the crusher has to do to get it down to a small enough size for, to, for it to go into the, uh, the ball and rod mills. So blasting is really, really important. It's the cheapest way to make big rock into small rock and you can't mine without blasting. It's essential. Another cool thing out here is they run these wheeled dozers. That's basically the frame of a 988 with a, a blade that's probably a similar size to a D8 on the front, like that D8 that's pushing right behind me. The wheeled dozer is a perfect machine for a big mine like this because it can't necessarily push like a dozer can. It doesn't have the underfoot, the traction that a, a traditional dozer has, but it can push enough to clean up haul roads, to, to move rocks out of the way, to save tires, to clean up after the shovel, and it can travel a lot faster than a dozer can. A dozer, you have undercarriage wear. You don't wanna be tracking it unnecessarily. You don't wanna be moving it all the way around the mine, and even if you are, it takes a lot of time, whereas that can get from one side of the mine to the other in 30 minutes, no problem at all, because it has rubber tires. So that's why they use these rubber tire dozers. They, while they can't push as much of it as a dozer, they can't replace a dozer, they are really handy for cleaning up and for getting around, staying flexible, 
being wherever they need to be around a big mine like this. Mining is, is really based on production. It's all about how much material you can put through a plant. Because it's production based, you want to run around the clock. So this mine, like just about any other copper mine in the United States, runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These guys will run from seven in the morning to seven at the night, 12 hour shifts. This is a fantastic, fantastic job. Probably one of the best jobs in the entire area of Butte, Montana, because it's reliable work, it's high paying work, it's satisfying. I mean, you're, you're literally shaping the earth. You're right in town here. This is an awesome place to work and it's pretty much phenomenal job security because the world's always gonna need copper. All right, so to give everybody just a brief overview about the processing part of the mining process. So the ore, like we saw, gets mined, hauled out of the pit, and is brought to a crusher. The 793s dump it into the crusher. The crusher does about 3,000 tons an hour. I think it's a, he said 60 or 80 ton crusher. 80 tons of cone crushing. The material comes off the crusher, goes into a secondary crusher to get it down to about three quarters inch minus, and that goes into the plant. Once it goes into the plant, it's then combined with water and is thrown into ball and rod mills. The goal of the ball and rod mills, they spin around and inside of the ball mill, they have metal balls. Inside of the rod mill, they have metal rods. And the metal balls basically just pulverize the rock to a really, 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 really fine powder. And once that's completed, it is pumped out into flotation tanks and combined with chemicals. The chemicals, what they do, they coagulate the metals. They, coagulate, they bring the copper together, they bring the moly together, and that floats to the surface and is skimmed off. And then the copper and moly goes and is separated uh, with one other process that's a chemical process. And then from there, it's dried and you end up with molybdenum and copper concentrate, which then goes to smelters around the world, as I explained. The waste material, the water and that slurry, that rock that wasn't what they were after, which is a majority of the material that goes into the crusher, is then pumped up to the tailings pond. So there's a dam that they built behind the mine. The water and tailings is pumped up behind that the tailing settles out over this valley, over this area, and then the water is then recycled into the process once again. All right, everybody, 
So all of that is to produce this right here. This is copper concentrate. And from here, it's loaded onto train cars, which go to smelters and larger refineries around the world, uh, either down to Utah, Quebec, or China. And that's turned into straight copper. So with that, that's another vlog. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed checking out this copper mine. Thanks for Montana Resources for having us out. We'll see you on the next one. Stay dirty. Staying, staying real dirty.